Benzo withdrawal is ineffable. It is truly indescribable. For those of us who have been through this experience, we find it incredibly difficult to relate our experience to those around us, those we love. And this can create a growing disconnect between us and the world around us. According to Benzodiazepine Information Coalition, 64% of benzo patients do not feel seen nor heard by those around them regarding their benzo experience. We often feel a sense of shame. We feel like we've been judged. A growing isolation can lead us to very dark places, to depression, to increased anxiety and loneliness. Many of us feel like we are being treated as addicts, even though that's rarely the case. For most benzo patients, we have taken the drugs as prescribed and have developed physical dependence and not an addiction. Far too often, benzo patients are pushed aside, ignored, disbelieved when we have attempted to explain what our situation is like to physicians and loved ones alike. It's really hard. I've experienced this myself, as have many of you. So what do we do about that? How can we relate our experience? How can we relate the severity of what some of us are going through to those who are closest to us? We've discussed this topic a few different times on our podcast. In fact, I believe last February we even dedicated episode 58, I think it is, to discussing benzos with physicians, therapists, and your family. So I pulled a little information from that episode, some from resources provided by Benzodiazepine Information Coalition, and some other research, and came up with today's six tips for talking about benzos with your loved ones. I hope you enjoy it. Let's dive right in. Number one, become educated. You know, becoming educated about benzos is important for two separate reasons. One, it's important for your own healing process. The more you know about what's going on, the more likely you'll be successful if you choose to withdraw. And second, the more you know up here, the better you can relate what's going on to others, especially to those around you, those closest to you. And where do you find reliable information on benzodiazepines and what you're going through? Well, that's why I'm here. <laughs> Let me give you a few suggestions. Number one, two, three, four, and five <laughs> are the Ashton Manual. If you haven't heard of it, check it out. You can find it at Bix website at benzoinfo.com slash Ashton Manual. This is the primary resource for benzodiazepine withdrawal available today. If you haven't read it, do so. And once you've read the manual, where do you go to next? Well, I would say read it again, <laughs> but let's just say that you've had enough of the Ashton Manual and you're looking for more information. That's where Bix resources come in. Go to benzoinfo.com slash resources, and you will see a whole variety of articles, research, printables, links to websites, podcasts, videos, just a vast array of information all about benzodiazepines. If you can't find enough there, then you're not really looking. <laughs> now, there are plenty of other resources out there, and some of them are excellent. But just be cautious. It is the Internet, after all, and not all the information is accurate. Number two, be honest and open. You know, you're in the middle of this. You are dealing with your anxiety symptoms and your symptoms of withdrawal 24-7, 365. This is something my wife would often remind me of. She'll, you know, get off on some other subject or some other task or whatever, and she'll wonder why I'm not responsive or I'm not able to participate or whatever, and it's because she sometimes forgets. And she's lived with me for <laughs> many years going through this, but she doesn't live with it 24-7. We do. And other people don't always know 
when you're having a bad day or when you're having a good day or what your current symptom is or why you've become irritable or why you've become distant or why you just want to be left alone for a few minutes or why you need comfort and support. It's important to let those who love you know that you need support, you need help. Be honest with them about what you're going through. Now, this is not an excuse to complain all the time. That gets old fast. But there's a difference between being honest and communicating and always being negative and complaining. Finding that balance, finding that sweet spot is an individual choice, but it's one that I think is important to find, especially during an ordeal like benzo withdrawal. Number three, speak calmly, concisely, and clearly. Now, this is Communications 101, and many of us know this, but I think it's a good reminder. We are often extremely emotional (laughs) during benzo withdrawal, especially during some of the acute phases and more severe, severe times. And it might be difficult for us to really get our message across to other people. Our emotions can overtake us, and it might be hard for people to listen to us when we're not clear, when we're not concise about what we're going through. Now, this this does not mean suppress your emotions. In fact, one of the one of the experiences of benzodiazepine withdrawal for many people often is experiencing your emotions sometimes for the first time and allowing that to happen, having the courage to experience those and grow from that. But when you relate it to other people, sometimes it's better to be a little more rational than emotional, to explain what you're going through. So learning how to share your story, share your experience concisely and clearly is an important step, I believe, in getting your message across to those you love. Number four, provide reading material. Now that you've done your own research, why not provide some of that for your loved ones to read, if they're willing? Yes, it's asking a favor, but sometimes it really helps. You know, when I went through my benzodiazepine withdrawal, I asked my wife to read the Ashton Manual. This is a big manual, and she did it cover to cover. And that was not only a really big favor, and I was very appreciative of what she did, but it also really helped her understand the scope of what I was going through. You know, another resource I found very valuable during my withdrawal in relating my experience to others was an article titled, Yes, Benzos Are Bad For You. It's by Dr. Alan Francis, Professor Emeritus at Duke University. And in this article, Dr. Francis didn't pull any punches. He was very clear and and effective in his portrayal of the severity of what many of us go through. And being from a renowned psychiatrist, I believe made it more effective, especially to medical professionals like physicians and other psychiatrists, but also to family members because it was only a two-page article. So it was something people would read and help to get the point across. And those are just a couple of resources available to you. Please visit Bix resource page at benzoinfo.com slash resources. Um, that's a great place to start. Number five, share testimonials. Benzo stories go a long way in helping people understand. The cornerstone of the Benzo Free Podcast is our Benzo Stories section. These are stories of individuals who have experienced benzo withdrawal firsthand and have had the courage to share their experience with others. But the podcast is only one source of benzo stories. So many benzo survivors have turned to YouTube to share their stories. And you can find hundreds of these with a simple keyword search. Hearing someone else speak about their personal experience with benzos helps legitimize your story and can aid in developing an understanding so your loved ones can begin to grasp the true scope of what you are experiencing. Number six, have patience and gratitude. This is a tough one. (laughs) This is the hardest of all of them. I mean, we're the ones suffering. 
why should we have to have patience and gratitude with other people? This is hard. This is a full-time job just managing our symptoms and getting through the day. We can't add on responsibility for other people. But we need to put ourselves in their shoes sometimes and realize that it is hard to understand the severity of this if you haven't experienced it. It's hard to believe other people are suffering when you're not going through it too. You know, a perfect example of this was um, I had a friend a while back before my experience with benzos and she was dealing with fibromyalgia. And she would often, you know, be unable to attend certain events or be late or have problems or whatever. And it was always due to her fibromyalgia, a disease that people can't see. Sound familiar? And I must admit, I doubted her condition. I'm telling you right now, I doubted her condition. I thought she was using it as an excuse to get out of things. It's human nature for me to doubt that. And it's human nature for us sometimes to use our conditions or diagnoses to get out of things that we don't want to do. But when I went through my own benzo experience, I learned what it's like to be on the other side. And I woke up and I understood. And I have a lot more empathy, a lot more patience now for people who are going through health crisis. You know, being a caregiver for somebody going through benzo withdrawal is a huge ask. It is a very hard job. My wife went through it and I can't imagine what I put her through. And so many other people are doing that, whether they're the full-time care person like a spouse, a child, a parent, or part-time like a friend or colleague or neighbor. It's still a lot to put somebody else through. But we need to. We need support for this, to go through this. You need other people. We do in life in general, but especially during such a difficult time as benzodiazepine withdrawal. So have a little patience and have some gratitude for those around you, for those who are still there, for those who are trying to take care of you, for those who are trying to understand what this is really like and what you're going through. For more information about this topic, please visit some of the resources we've listed here. To learn more about Benzodiazepine Information Coalition, visit their website at benzoinfo.com. My name is Dee. I'm host of the Benzo Free Podcast. You can learn more about what we do at easinganxiety.com. And remember, keep calm, taper slowly, and take care of yourself. I'll see you next time.